Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight for CBS News Detroit at 7. I'm Shayna Humphreys and Super Bowl 57 is officially in the books with the Kansas City Chiefs coming out on top for the second time in four years. Thousands of Chiefs fans partied in the streets in Missouri to celebrate another victory. Everyone is having an incredible time. It's been awesome to see everyone pull through through all the injuries, through all the adversity. Coming back in the second half, it's been awesome. It's crazy. And while the streets of Philadelphia were still packed with Eagles fans, unfortunately, there wasn't much celebrating to do in the city of brotherly love. We thought when Mahomes got hurt that it was like kind of signed, sealed, and delivered, but it, it's amazing how they came back, and that guy's really tough. I mean, you kind of have to give it to him. You know, it's, I mean, we're super disappointed, but they were a formidable opponent, and it was an even game, and so at least it wasn't disappointing that it was just all one-sided. The Super Bowl was advertiser's biggest night of the year with more than 100 million people watching in the U.S. A 30 second spot during the game came with a hefty price tag costing brands nearly seven million dollars. CBS's Chris Van Cleve has a look at some of the ads that have everyone talking. Aren't you a little old for high school? <laughs> this year's Super Bowl ad blitz included throwbacks to cult classic movies. and TV shows. Popcorners? You're an artist. Actually, Jesse, it's just basic ingredients. But at the end of the day, you really end up seeing these big celebrities because brands want the most recognition. Viewers may have also noticed some collaborations. General Motors is going electric, and Netflix is joining With companies sharing the cost of a Super Bowl spot. Scott, you know the rules. No shrinking and drinking. Most ads were anything but alcohol-free. After Anheuser-Busch gave up their exclusive rights, it made room for others to flood the screen. That's a team, ladies and gentlemen. While many ads played on nostalgia with big names. Everyone saves me, saves me, way more. These promoted an even bigger name. Christians spent around 20 million on a pair of ads as part of a campaign for Jesus. Jesus is in a bit of a rebrand right now. They're going out to rebrand Jesus to make him appeal to more younger people. The Japanese Ooh, pharmaceutical like company nice raised day. awareness around an atypical Super Bowl topic, menopause. Questions. Oh, menopause. Yay. But overall, Madison Avenue was back in true form, selling celebrity gimmicks slathered with cheese. Ham and Brie, I get it. At a reported seven million for 30 seconds, that'll cost plenty of dough. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Glendale, Arizona. Joining us now is Matt Friedman, co-founder of public relations firm Tanner Friedman. Thank you for joining us today, Matt. Thanks, Shana. Good to be here to talk about this. Yeah, it's good to have you. So let's start with the big picture. If you had to give the 2023 Super Bowl commercials a grade or a ranking, where does it rank for you? I, I think it ranks pretty high. And I think the big winner in all of this is Detroit. One okay. of the things I look at from a public relations perspective is how does an ad in the Super Bowl shape reputation yeah. with more than a hundred million people watching there's nothing else like it in our society and I think in terms of the Detroit auto industry and the electric vehicle future that is key to the big employers here we came out really well the GM commercial with real Will Ferrell was great the Ram commercial with the truck yeah. was very memorable um, and if in the Jeep commercial with the animals and the electric slide, yes. fun, memorable, positive, people woke up today feeling good about the Detroit automakers and the future of electric vehicles. That's good for everybody here. Detroit yeah. won. Is there typically quite a few, are there typically quite a few ads on Super Bowl Sunday related to new vehicles? People always need new vehicles. Yeah, but I think it's a little bit different because the automakers need to convince the consumer that the technology is good not just the car but the technology overall and so reputation of electric vehicles is something the automakers are working really hard at trying to build and they were able to accomplish a little bit of that during the super bowl and that's important for all of us here who depend on that industry do you think viral ads commercials that have someone like will ferrell in them 
does it have the power to sort of start to turn the tide to start making people think more about moving electric if maybe they weren't thinking that before? It probably does. We are a culture here that is in our country, not just Detroit, but mm -hmm. nationally, we are obsessed with celebrity. We love celebrities. And that's what really connects us sometimes is the pop culture of celebrities. So I understand why you put Will Ferrell in there, why GM would spend that kind of money, because yeah. that helps it stand out more than just the car, but the concept of embracing electric vehicles. Yeah. Somebody like Will Ferrell, who's fun, and everybody agrees is fun and pretty non-controversial, good for brand, good for reputation, and, and that makes sense. Yeah, it's interesting which celebrities we do see out there. So much of our culture has kind of been intertwined with uh, social media influence, and you see influencers on so much, but not really Super Bowl Sunday. We start to see a move toward your traditional kind of A-list celebrities, right? I think that's an astute point, because you're talking about a mass audience, and normally the influencers online are speaking to a very niche audience, yeah. and the Super Bowl is the exception to the rule. It's really the only way to reach the great masses. Nothing even comes close to the audience of the Super Bowl. Not the award shows, which used to kind of be in that same breath, the Oscars and things like that, are now dwarfed by the ratings of not just the Super Bowl, yeah. but the NFL overall. What kind of trends are you noticing? One for me was it seems we're still very much in this nostalgia era. You know, we're in the reboot era and we're we're looking back at series that have only ended a couple years ago. We saw some Breaking Bad and some older. We, we saw that Clueless reference. What what What's the nostalgia? I think it's thing? very clear that, that Gen X, and I'm right in the middle of that, that we now must have more disposable income than we realize because the advertisers are coming after us with beer and all <laughs> kinds of things where maybe we weren't the target before. The other uh, interesting thing that I saw from a reputation standpoint is that some apps and websites are buying Super Bowl ads just to build familiarity and right. probably sampling. You know, most of us are watching TV now with some kind of device in our hands, mm -hmm. either a phone or an iPad or a laptop, and chances are that $7 million was pretty well spent. If, if droves of people went to those websites or downloaded that app, that wouldn't have otherwise. That shopping app, I'd never heard of it before. Right. I think they may have bought three spots. Probably they ended up doing pretty well. That was the one with the jingle. I can't, I, I'm amazed that it's not stuck in my head right now because last night I was thinking, well, this is going to be stuck in my head for days. Yeah, so that sampling was interesting. The other trend I thought was interesting were the QR codes. Yes. And I think, first of all, during the pandemic, we all got more comfortable with mm -hmm. QR codes especially when we started going out to eat again, and that's how we got a menu, yeah. and we didn't need a separate app to do it. It's just the camera on our phone, which we all have. But I think what those advertisers were counting on is that maybe we would pause live TV, which most of us can do now with a DVR of some sort, yeah. and then capture that QR code, even if it goes by fast. So it'll be interesting to see if, if that helps anybody's reputation or familiarity, the fact that they were able to engage with an audience that way. And that's got to be some really useful information for the companies doing that because they're getting sort of real-time data about how effective their ads are, It's right? all trackable. So, you know, like I said, if a website advertises or an app advertises, you can go online right then and sample. If you have a QR, you can, QR, you can scan it and sample. It isn't like the old days where they had to wait to see maybe Budweiser would sell a little bit more this year or maybe it wouldn't. Sure. What was the deal with the company sharing spots? I was a little bit confused watching some of these ads, and it was, who is this ad for? Uh, you would be. So there was the beer commercial, for example, mm -hmm. with Miller Lite and Coors Light and Blue Moon. Yeah. Guess what? Owned by the same huge company. That's it would how they be, get us. <laughs> yeah, it would be like if it was uh, Cadillac and Buick and Chevrolet. Sure. It all owned by the same huge company. Same kind of thing. So it was maybe three for the price of one. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's what they were thinking. <laughs> Still a steep price tag, even if you look at it that way. Uh, did you have a favorite ad overall, one that just won the night for you? As a consumer, I really like the Michelob Ultra Caddyshack. Yeah. That's, that's totally in my wheelhouse. Uh, a favorite movie of mine and I like that uh, the, the guy from Succession which is a show I watch was yes. in it. Logan Serena Roy. Williams is, is always good and uh -huh. Tony Romo was sneaking in there too. We saw so, a lot of Serena. Yeah so yeah we did yeah she was selling a lot of alcohol yeah. for whatever reason. <laughs> 
Um, so I enjoyed that one personally. But overall, I thought the ads, as I said at the beginning, were entertaining and, and I think generally good for the brands. One of the things I'm often asked in conversations like this, did anybody harm their reputation with their sure. Super Bowl yeah, ad? Were there any that just and didn't I, work? No, this year, no. We've seen it in the past. We've seen some bad taste or we've seen some... It may be the left hand and the right hand of the corporation yeah. weren't talking to each other. I didn't see anything like that last night, and I think that's, that's generally good for the companies, of course, that made right. the investment. Do you think companies are a little more aware, aware these days of the types of content that could potentially make the kind of wave you don't want to make? Yeah, I think the advertising people in general are getting better at getting public relations to the table and yeah. saying, is there anything wrong with this idea yeah. <laughs> we might get backlash for, even if it's really right. creative? Sure. And that's, that's good for everybody. That second set of eyes, great for yes. everybody. All right. Well, Matt Friedman, thank you so much for joining us tonight. This has been wonderful. We hope to have you back sometime. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. And when we return, Ronnie Duncan sits down with a former Lions player and sports caster to talk about the game. CBS News Detroit, on your block, around the clock, in Macomb County. Hi, we're CBS News Detroit, but we don't just cover the news here. We're also here, here, and everywhere in between. You know, the places you live, work, and play in Southeast Michigan. We're talking less of this, and more of the stories that actually matter to you. CBS News Detroit, on your block, around the clock. That's right, local news just found a home in your neighborhood. We're CBS News Detroit, live, streaming, and on demand. Nice to meet you. CBS News Detroit, on your block, around the clock in Wayne County. News Detroit on your block around the clock in Monroe County. CBS News Detroit, the stories you care about. Live, streaming, and on demand. We're on your block around the clock. Southeast Michigan News whenever you want it. We live here. We work here. From North Branch to Southgate. East Point to Westland. Wherever you live, we're here for you. Making a difference in your neighborhood. CBS News Detroit. Live, streaming, and on demand. Building a better newscast, one story at a time. CBS News Detroit, on your block, around the clock in Oakland County. It's here, the new CBS News Detroit. Covering every corner of our community. With experienced journalists, uncovering the stories that truly matter to you. Making a difference in your neighborhood. And weather experts, always looking ahead to prepare you for what's next. Live, streaming, and on demand, with more hours of local news coming soon. Southeast Michigan News, whenever you want it, right here on CBS News Detroit. Weekdays at 5, 6, and 11, and streaming live. You heard it, James Wester, uh, Winchester that is, he's the long snapper for Kansas City, the Chiefs, he says it, it couldn't have been sweeter the first time because the second time around is just as nice. Kansas City Chiefs are now Super Bowl champs, defeating the Philadelphia Eagles 38 to 35. After going into halftime down 10 points, the Chiefs came roaring right back in the second half. They never looked back. I spoke this morning with a fan who said it made it crystal clear to me. As a Lion fan, he really wasn't interested, but the result? was worth the wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I guess we're not going to go to that soundbite, but that's okay. You know the Lions fans were telling me, hey, look, that soundbite, don't worry about it, Ronnie, talk to me. He says, look, <laughs> next year he wants to see the Eagles not in the Super Bowl. He wants that to be the Detroit Lions because just like the Eagles, they had a 9-8 and record and they can turn things around. Now joining me loud is a former Lions offensive tackle, Lomas Brown. He is also along with my man Ortiz. Both of you guys are here joining us <laughs> on the set. And I just want to say we had one heck of a Super Bowl, did we not, gentlemen? Oh, it was awesome. I mean, the combined points, teams going up and down, the excitement of the game, man. And just to see the skill of those players, man, and the, and the two quarterbacks. They put on the show, so it was wonderful to see. And he mentions the quarterbacks. Look, we're seeing one of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history right yes. now, Patrick Mahomes. But we're also seeing young quarterbacks like Justin Herbert, like Joe Burrow, like Josh Allen. They're starting to come into their own, and it's going to make for some exciting Super Bowls this point forward. Look, I'm a defensive guy. I was telling you that. <laughs> but this was fun. I mean, I have to admit, 38-35, that was fun. Yeah. Let's go back and look at the first half of this football game because, mm -hmm. in my opinion, there was one play that really, if you look back, it changes the complexion of the game. And that's when it appeared that Philadelphia was about to score again, yep. and there comes the fumble. Ortiz, how big was that? That was huge. It was absolutely huge because they were going in to probably salt this game away. Instead, the Chiefs take that fumble, return it for a touchdown. They're right back in the game, and that set the stage for what they did in the second half. Yeah, I mean, the thing about it, and Jalen had been so great yeah. with the ball. That's the thing about it. And they knew he was going to be running the ball. It's just unfortunate he was trying to switch hands, and they were able to get their hands on the ball. Or he dropped the ball, and they were able to pick it up. But again, credit the offensive line since I was talking about the quarterbacks, yep. and I talked about the big fellas. Yeah. Them big fellas, they laid it on the line yesterday, kept Patrick healthy. And they, on both sides of right. the ball, I thought they did well. And you know what I thought about you when I saw that? Because both offensive lines played well. Yes. One sack in the entire game. One yes. sack. Yes. You don't usually see that in the Super Bowl, but both of those offensive lines played well. And that bodes well for the Lions because they are building a very good that's offensive right. line right now. And maybe that's the key for them getting to a playoff. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of history right now on this platform, Tony. And let's face it, many of us are a little older. I'm 64, and mm -hmm. Lomas is in the 60-year group mm -hmm. as well. Can't talk about you because I don't know. <laughs> but let me put it to you this way. We've seen some of the great quarterbacks of the past, sure. be it Bart Starr, be it Lenny Dawson. And mm -hmm. then when you move on, you've got uh, Joe Namath, you've got Johnny Unitas, you've got Earl Morrow coming in. And then you've got people like the great Joe Montana. Yes. Where does this new group fit? Because when you talk Patrick Mahomes, that's two Super Bowl championships in four seasons. I've never seen a group of young quarterbacks like this in the NFL yeah. ever, and I'm closing in on 60. So it, it's been a long time since I've seen these, the play of the young quarterbacks be as stellar as it's been. So to me, I think we're seeing the golden age of quarterbacks right yeah. now. You have been an offensive lineman. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it? for the individuals like Orlando and others on the offensive line for Kansas City to make those changes. Remember, no longer was there Tariq Hill there. All of a sudden, you got Juju, yep. who is now in the mix, and you've got all of these other individuals, and then you got Tony, who just comes out of nowhere and plays excellent yep. football. Is it the system? Is it the enemy? Is it Reed? Is it Mahomes? What is it? Because there's a lot of changes you've got to make as an offensive lineman Absolutely. just to be prepared for different talent that you're not used to. Travis Kelsey, let's face it, we know what he can do. Right. We exactly. know what Jason Kelsey can do, who plays for Philadelphia, the brother out of Cleveland Heights, mm -hmm. and both of them, as a matter of fact, you probably signed an autograph back in the day and didn't even know <laughs> it, know you it. know, when you're playing for the Cleveland Browns. But how difficult is it to make a transition like that when you are an offensive lineman and all of a sudden your go-to yes. is no longer there and you find a way to make it even better? Yeah, I mean, it, it's tough, you're right, and it is an adjustment. I think the, the, the soothing part or the comforting part was you got a guy like Patrick Mahomes yep. back there, a guy that not only could use that talent and arm, but the thing about the T.O. is that these guys are mobile. These yes. quarterbacks now, they're dual threat quarterbacks. So when I was in the game, they were just straight <laughs> in the right. pocket. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the defensive people know where, knew where to come get those quarterbacks out. Now they got to be cautious about how they rush the quarterback yep. because these guys can get out and they can hurt you with their feet. So I think that's one of the biggest differences to help that offensive line because they know that they had a quarterback uh, level of Patrick uh, Mahomes or the level of Jalen Hurt that can get out of trouble. I remember hearing you on the radio, mm -hmm. hearing you on the radio say this. 
we saw something special. You both basically said the same sentence. Mm -hmm. We saw something special when Philadelphia was here. Yes. yes. And there was only a three-point difference mm -hmm. between the two teams. Correct. When you look at where Philly was a year ago, mm -hmm. they get blown out by Dallas, first playoff game. Uh-oh. Okay, we don't have a playoff yeah. game, yeah. but their records were identical 9-8. and eight. Mm -hmm. Could we see the Detroit Lions in the Super Bowl Ooh. next season? Go ahead, T.O. Go Don't ahead. put it out there, Tony. Go ahead, you know, <laughs> Go I'm ahead on your website. Put me on the spot. I'm put you on the spot. <laughs> I'm going to do like this. Tony said it. That's I mean, right. Tony <laughs> said it. But if they win, I mean, Tony was I so know. right. <laughs> No, Go Tony. No, Go Tony. <laughs> I don't think so. Here's why. I think the NFC is so tight with the competition. Philadelphia. But you thought Green Dallas Bay was so was tight, Tony? Yes, I did. You're right. I thought Green Bay was very, and they still could be if Aaron Rodgers comes back. But the NFC is tight. I think it's going to take another year or two before we see the Lions make a Super Bowl league. Next year, I think they can make the leap to be a playoff team. But I think it's going to take another year or two after yeah. that before they become a Super I, Bowl. I think. Look, I, I agree. Division Whew, next year. You. I think the goal for them is to win the division. That's got to be your number oh, yeah. one goal. You win your division, you're you in know the you're going to get a, Correct. And a home playoff game, that's too. Right. Mm -hmm. So, And I think that's key for the Lions, if yep. they can get a home playoff game. So, division, that's all I'm thinking. If I'm Dan Campbell, that's all I'm preaching. It's been a long time since Tobin wrote, walked through that locker room. Okay? <laughs> 1957. I know the history. <laughs> and can we get there again? And if you believe Vegas odds makers, the Lions go into the that's season right. as the favorite. Favorites yes. to win the NFC North with an asterisk because yeah. we don't know what Aaron Rodgers is going to do. We don't know if he comes back to Green Bay next year. We don't know if he gets traded. But the Lions are considered the favorites right now, according to Vegas, to win the NFC North. And top ten. Yeah, I, I got them as a top ten team to get to the Super Bowl. I'm like, that's a huge jump. You know and what I'm thinking right now? <laughs> Jinx. I'm like the OJ's. Money, money, money. <laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, look, I want to thank you guys for stopping on through. No, no we all know that the draft is coming up. I know you got some people. Anytime you're talking Lomas, he's always talking yes. about an offensive lineman. That's who he wants to draft. But, I mean, we're going to have more yes. right yes. after this break. So just stick around. We're going to talk more about what's going on. We come back right after this break. We got more fun for you. It's all about the Super Bowl 57. Yeah, 58's coming, and it's going to be right here on CBS Detroit. We'll come on back. CBS News Detroit, on your block, around the clock, in Macomb County. Hi, we're CBS News Detroit, but we don't just cover the news here. We're also here, here, and everywhere in between. You know, the places you live, work, and play in Southeast Michigan. We're talking less of this, and more of the stories that actually matter to you. CBS News Detroit, on your block, around the clock. That's right. Local news just found a home in your neighborhood. We're CBS News Detroit, live, streaming, and on demand. Nice to meet you. CBS News Detroit, on your block, around the clock in Wayne County. News Detroit on your block around the clock in Monroe County. CBS News Detroit, the stories you care about. Live, streaming, and on demand. We're on your block around the clock. Southeast Michigan News whenever you want it. We live here. We work here. From North Branch to Southgate. East Point to Westland. Wherever you live, we're here for you. Making a difference in your neighborhood. CBS News Detroit live streaming and on demand building a better newscast one story at a time cbs news detroit on your block around the clock in oakland county it's here the new cbs news detroit covering every corner of our community with experienced journalists uncovering the stories that truly matter to you making a difference in your neighborhood and weather experts always looking ahead to prepare you for what's next 
live, streaming, and on demand with more hours of local news coming soon. Southeast Michigan news whenever you want it, right here on CBS News Detroit. Weekdays at 5, 6, and 11, and streaming live. That game last night was a heck of a game. Uh, you really, I, I know Philly's hanging their head a little bit, but nobody really lost. I mean, it was two great teams playing each other and, um, and two great cities, so. All right, welcome back. Once again, we're joined by former Detroit Lions offensive tackle, Lomas Brown, and Tony Ortiz, a news anchor at WWJ, and a former sideline reporter. And of course, uh, you know my man Marshall over there at WWJ. He's a good <laughs> guy. So I had to go ahead and throw like somebody that I know this in. But uh, gentlemen, we're talking off camera, and we're looking forward, and we just heard from Andy Reid. Mm -hmm. How much joy do you think he has beating his old team, the people who fired him? And now he beats you to win a Super Bowl. I, I mean, that had to feel good to Coach Reed. I mean, he's been a phenomenal coach the whole. I mean, even when he was at Philly and couldn't get over that hump and win the Super Bowl, but going to all those title games that he went to finally to get to Kansas City and to win his second one now, it just solidifies him as one of the best coaches that has coached this game. And I mean, this is just the beginning. You listen to him, 64, he say he wants to get back. Got a yep. young quarterback in Patrick Mahomes. I could see him getting back and back to a couple of more Super Bowls with that lineup that they have. I agree. And Lomas can speak to this a little bit better, but players I've talked to in the locker rooms in the past, they have always said when they're facing their former teams, there's a little oh, bit yeah. of juice there. There's mm -hmm. a yes, little sir. bit of, I want to prove to you that you made a mistake in firing right. me. Yeah. And so I think it's the same way for a guy like Andy Reid. He wants to prove that leaving Philadelphia, getting fired by Philadelphia was a mistake on their part, and he was going to get them back. Yes. It's been one of the most viewed Super Bowls already. What was so talented about this Super Bowl? I mean, you had two brothers playing against yes, one another. I'm yes. talking about the Kelsey brothers. Absolutely. right? And then you had two African-American quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. 35 years since the day mm -hmm. that Doug Williams became the first African-American right. quarterback to lead the Washington Redskins over the Denver Broncos. Yeah. How far have we come, Tony? I think we've come a, far, a long way because there used to be a time growing up, when I was growing up in the 60s, early 70s, where a black man wasn't playing quarterback. Mm -hmm. You saw a black man drafted. Tony Dungy is a great example of that. Played quarterback at Minnesota, mm -hmm. but right. he was moved to the defensive secondary when he was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Marlon Briscoe is another one. Marlon Briscoe, yes. one Marlon of the best. Marlon Briscoe, Denver great, Broncos. very yes. good quarterback, but he ended up playing wide receiver in the NFL. Yeah. So we've come a long way now that we can be looked at and seen as quarterback material, that we can go in and run a team and be the face of a franchise. It's right. amazing, Tony, when you talk about it, because now you're making me think of Joe Gilliam and what sure. he did, mm -hmm. and he was there in Pittsburgh, and it wasn't for Terry Bradshaw being the golden child right. of that time, and Joe having substance abuse problems, mm -hmm. who knows where he could have gone mm -hmm. in the football margin. I mean, I talk to guys like John Stallworth, and he'll tell me, he says, Ronnie, Joe Gilliam was yep. that good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's just that Joe Gilliam had problems. And people forget, Joe Gilliam started one year for the Steelers. He beat out Terry Bradshaw. Yeah. He was the starter for a team that eventually won the Super Bowl. But like you said, his problems off the field were what sidelined him and, and kept him from being a quarterback that we're still talking about today. Yeah. Almost, I'm going to bring you in, and I know you want to talk about a subject that's dear to your heart, and that's inclusion. Yeah. Okay? And let's face it, when we hear the name Eric B. Enemy, mm -hmm. we just hear the name right. and it falls, just right. like my glasses. Absolutely. Okay? And he's not getting that head coaching job. Some of us may have reasons to believe why he doesn't get it, mm -hmm. but is it right? No, it's not right at all. I mean, and we're talking about Eric. What about Lyon, Byron Leftwich yes. before what happened to him? He was a hot candidate for a couple of years, never got a coaching job. And you see that. And then we're talking about the guys you see. You got so many coaches that's coming up in the ring, OCs and DCs that never get opportunities. The NFL has always been one of those leagues where they try to recycle the coaches, recycle the talent mm -hmm. in that league. But you got so much fresh talent. You got so many bright minds coming up, and they all they want is an opportunity. That's all we ever asked for right. was a play at the dinner table. That's Correct. all I ever wanted. I think that's all anybody ever wants is the opportunity, and it's not given. And you can kind of see it. I mean, when you see a guy like Kellen Moore get fired from Dallas, and mm -hmm. an hour later he has a job. Frank Wright. I could just talk about Jeff Saturday. Yeah. No experience, and he gets a head coaching job, jumping everybody. So it is a problem. It's a problem that the NFL has to address. 
when we talk about the space that we currently live in, mm -hmm. and I'm talking about being just about 12 miles away from Ford Field, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the enthusiasm that is here. Lomas, you have played in Arizona. You have played in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. You have played here. You played almost every NFL team. Right. It's just that everybody <laughs> didn't claim you because they didn't want to give you a check. But I'll give it to you this way. What is so special to you about a Detroit Lions fan? Um, that, wow. The, you know what? They die hardest, <laughs> man. I'm telling you, man, they're taking their fandom to the grave. And they and, and they don't jump off the bandwagon. And we no. know, Lord knows, uh, it's been a long time for the Lions, 30 years yep. since the last playoff victory and back in the 50s since the championship. But the Lions fans, they believe. They come into every season yep. believing that this team is going to the Super Bowl. And you can't tell them anything any different. And every time you talk to one, man, my dad, my yeah, granddad, yeah, yeah. everybody, yeah, yep. if you're born in the state of Michigan, you are a Lion fan. Unfortunately, I got my son involved with it because of what I did. He is a huge Lions fan. And the one thing is he'll buy the jerseys. He's got a bunch of jerseys in there. But every year he has that belief that the Lions are yep. going to make the playoffs. This is the year. He was watching the Super Bowl yeah. last night with me and my wife, and he was angry because he wanted to see the Lions in the Super Bowl. He's like, we got to get in the Super Bowl next year. You know? What's it going to be like if the Lions are in the Super Bowl? Ooh. This place is going to go crazy. Oh this my God. town is going to yes. explode. It's going to be wall-to-wall. Focus on football 24-7 and focus see, on I the got Lions. my fingers yeah. crossed. Y'all go ahead and yeah. play all you want. I want everybody to know there's only one place you can see the Super Bowl next year. That's, That's right. right there. That's CBS right. News Detroit. Ronnie Duncan tell you the Lions are going to get there. How you like that? Plug it, Ronnie. Uh, yeah, I, might as well. I, mean, I mean, let me be the first. Roll the tape on this. Lions going to the Super Bowl next year. If they win it, I can't be responsible if they lose it. But if they win it, I'm going to take a responsibility. Uh, gentlemen, before we leave. Yes. I know you guys love music. Yes. I know you love singers. So let's go uh -oh. with Shirley Ralph singing the Negro oh, National man. Anthem. How impressive was that yesterday? S see, I actually missed it. I Did know you really? I missed, uh, you missed it, something man. Special, I man. heard my wife told me how special it was, yeah. and I really I, I hated that I missed that. So I'm going home. Right. I'm a YouTuber. Yes. Because I got to okay, see no, that. No, I no, heard no. it was it, something special. It was special. so amazing. Yeah. Was Did you get a chance to see Babyface? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I thought he did an outstanding yes. job with the red, white, yes. and blue guitar. I thought he you know, did too. singing, yes. of course, America the Beautiful. I thought Stapleton did an outstanding job yeah, singing National Anthem. Oh my God. Yes, he did. So the I know the over under was two minutes. Two minutes. And and I know he seconds. went past that, right? <laughs> yes. Because he was he was holding them though. But I love that, that last note. I love him. Okay. Man. What about Rihanna? Come on now. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna let so, Tony go first. Okay. Let get, Tony, Tony go get first. your thoughts go ahead, together. I know you're watching it with your wife, but man, look, the lady got a bump, so you can't really talk. Much right. about it, all right? The platforms were impressive when she was up there on the platforms. I thought that was really cool. Um, I'm not the biggest Rihanna fan, but I did enjoy the halftime. I did watch her, and I have to admit, when she got the diamonds at that last song, I was singing along with oh. her. So there you go. See, I was going, umbrella. Eh, 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 eh. Oh. I, can't, right, I can't do that song. I can't. No. Go ahead, oh, Lomas. Oh, my goodness. Lomas, you ain't coming back no more. No, hey, but you guys. But I enjoyed it. I really yeah. did. I didn't know she was. Yeah, I didn't know I she didn't had either. the bump. Yes. I was shocked. Yeah. I was sitting there. I was like, wait a minute. Is that yeah. from the, you know, baby weight? just left over I just I didn't know at that point but hey man she's an entertainer yes once she has her next baby then she's gonna be back to swinging her hips okay. and doing what she normally does all right everybody yeah. like that that's good man <laughs> all right so before I let you go yes. both of you since you didn't see you thought you're gonna get these questions in <laughs> oh, advance, oh here we it go don't work that way <laughs> how many games is they gonna be the top mm. 10 they're in the top nine they should make the playoffs somebody says say they should win their division how many games and 17 games mm. do the Lions win next season? You for, first. For me, I said it's six or seven this year. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with nine. I'm going I'm to go back with the nine. I'm saying nine and eight. But I think nine and eight will win the division next year because I don't see Green Bay. Yeah. And, I, and I never believed in Minnesota. You know, they might sneak one out, but right. I'm, I'm going nine. I'm staying on the safe side. I'm going to say nine right now. I still believe in Minnesota. I still think that's a good team, even with Kirk Cousins. Tony, you were doing real good. <laughs> about, I still believe but in hold Minnesota. On, Ronnie. Yeah. I'm, I'm a go. Kirk Cousins hater, and I play one on TV. <laughs> oh, I still right. like Kirk Cousins, but I'm going to go Lomas one better, Ronnie. Ten.
right. I'm going to say 10 wins next year, since and I, I think they win the NFC. Since I get the final yes. word, I'm going to go 12. Thanks, guys. Wow. <laughs> I like that. Okay. All right. Special thanks to Lomas Brown and Tony Ortiz for joining us for this show. Now, coming up, Shane is coming back, and she's going to be talking more about Rihanna in the halftime show with two special guests. So stay with us right here at CBS Detroit Online. CBS News Detroit, on your block, around the clock, in Macomb County. Hi, we're CBS News Detroit, but we don't just cover the news here. We're also here, here, and everywhere in between. You know, the places you live, work, and play in Southeast Michigan. And less of this. And more of the stories that actually matter to you. CBS News Detroit, on your block, around the clock. That's right, local news just found a home in your neighborhood. We're CBS News Detroit, live, streaming, and on demand. Nice to meet you. CBS News Detroit, on your block, around the clock in Wayne County. News Detroit on your block around the clock in Monroe County. CBS News Detroit, the stories you care about. Live, streaming, and on demand. We're on your block around the clock. Southeast Michigan News whenever you want it. We live here. We work here. From North Branch to Southgate. East Point to Westland. Wherever you live, we're here for you. Making a difference in your neighborhood. CBS News Detroit. Live, streaming, and on demand. Building a better newscast, one story at a time. CBS News Detroit, on your block, around the clock in Oakland County. It's here, the new CBS News Detroit. Covering every corner of our community. With experienced journalists, uncovering the stories that truly matter to you. Making a difference in your neighborhood. And weather experts, always looking ahead to prepare you for what's next. Live, streaming, and on demand, with more hours of local news coming soon. Southeast Michigan News, whenever you want it, right here on CBS News Detroit. Weekdays at 5, 6, and 11, and streaming live. Many tuned into football's biggest nights, not for the game or even the commercials, but for the halftime show and nothing else. According to Forbes, nearly 29 million households watched Rihanna's halftime performance Sunday night. The Grammy winning singer performed all kinds of hits like Rude Boy, We Found Love and ending the show with Diamonds and Umbrella. To help break it all down, and there is a lot to break down tonight, we are joined by Detroit's own DJ BJ and Melody Fresh of 105.9 KISS FM. Thank you both for being here tonight. Absolutely. No Thanks problem. for having us. We got to start with just the big picture view, the judgment. I want to know, yes. yay or nay, did we love it? Did we hate it? BJ, we'll start with you. I'm going to go 50-50 with it, okay. and that's only because after she performed, they announced that she was pregnant. So, so you're implying you had a you had a different judgment until that before because we're used to a lot of movement from the the main you know Super Bowl performer and yeah. then also she didn't bring out any guests. I'm used to so many guests coming out during that Super Bowl performance. Mm -hmm. Melody, I loved it. <laughs> I personally was there for the Rihanna concert. I was not there for the game. Yes. couldn't tell you who's playing. My husband's team wasn't in it, but I loved it. And knowing, you know, realizing that she was pregnant, I'm like, oh, baby, yes. Give so it to you her. loved it before? Before, even before I realized. But I loved how she paid homage. Uh, I loved the costumes. The only thing I can say I didn't like was the dancers' costumes. 
Okay. I feel like those could have been different, but I thought Rihanna looked absolutely fierce. I saw some comparisons to the Teletubbies on social media. There were, you know, social hazmat suits. Social media would tear you down every It was a lot. <laughs> okay, so you mentioned BJ, no guests. A lot of people were expecting some guests. Mm -hmm. Surely we thought Jay-Z's got to come out. We know he's there. Yeah. Somebody, but the only guest was the surprise one. We'll talk about that in, in yeah. a moment. Who did you think we were going to see and what was going through your mind as she continued to perform and no one joined her? I just figured Jay-Z for sure. I figured a, a Kanye West would come out. Um, I figured a lot of artists just from little snippets, but no one came to, like you said, it was more of a wardrobe thing. They say she didn't get paid for the show. Right. Yeah. It was her featuring her products inside of it. So a lot of the wardrobe was Rihanna wear. Yeah. So I think that was her feature. Instead of doing artists, hey, I don't have the budget for those guys. Let me just bring all my clothing into the mix. Are we a little spoiled, though, after last year? We saw people just coming out of the Absolutely. woodwork, and there were multiple headliners. Yes. Most years, there have been multiple headliners. Other than uh, other than Rihanna, it's been Gaga, maybe one or two other people in recent years who have just yeah. been a sole headliner. So do you think it's fair to judge by the guests? I mean, I'm here to see the artist. If somebody, go, if somebody else comes out, cool, but... I'm personally there to see them. So if, if nobody else comes out, I'm good. I was interested in, you know, in the headliner. So yeah. Now what about the show itself? Some people were saying it was it left something to be desired. There were no frills, but I thought she was flying around. I thought visually I it was suspended in the That was air. Yes. that was a thrill. That was you a thrill for me. You yeah. perform yeah. karaoke suspended in the air and let me tell you let's see how it goes. Just do anything suspended <laughs> in the air. So BJ, what happened for you when you realized, okay, she just announced the that she's carrying her second child. What happened for you? How did that change things? I'm a big Rihanna fan, mm -hmm. so I'm one of those guys when she got pregnant the first time, you know, semi heartbroken. It hurt a little bit. It hurt a little Stop. bit. So to <laughs> for you to not, you know, send me a personal DM and let me know before you hitting the stage that hey, I have a second one on the way, I think that hurt every man in America. I think hearts were broken around For the sure. world. That's fair to say. <laughs> Melody. A DM. BJ. A yeah, DM. I, I think Riri, I deserve the DM. Bad gal yeah. was going to DM you <laughs> and let you. Okay. How did it change it for you once you realized? And there was a lot of speculation. People were like, they didn't want to ask. Yeah. It was a lot of issues. Because it's rude to ask. It's rude. Don't ask. Right, right. Have you ever asked a woman was she pregnant? And she Don't was do not? it. Do not do it. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> knowing that. Listen, I'm a mother myself. That fatigue kicks you in the butt. Yeah. So if you can put on a halftime show, any stage pregnant, I don't care if it was 13 days, I'm giving you even bigger applause. And she's so. strapped to a platform flying around. Can you imagine? In the, again, A-I-R, the air. She's up in the air. Now, one of the things that people were thinking about this Super Bowl was that this might be the beginning of something new in Rihanna's career. Maybe a tour gets announced. Maybe that album that everybody is waiting for. And she never gave us that. Yeah. It was only everybody else putting their desires forth and into the blog. Rihanna never gave us that energy. And she literally said, I have a special guest, a special guest, and would not tell us who it was. Yeah. It all what? makes sense now. Yes. It all came out. <laughs> Did you think this was going to be that moment? Did you think this was a new era in her music career? I do. I think a lot of people have been waiting for an album, new music. They're waiting for the old Rihanna to re-come back. But I think she's grown now, especially yeah. once you have a kid. You know, you elevate and your time is just totally not the same. So yeah. I think she's still focused on music and everything, but now I think her lane of driving is to a whole new demographic because of motherhood. Yeah, and I mean, as a mother, Melody, wh yes. how do, what do you think about that? The fact that she kind of showed everyone, yes, I can still do this, but it's not her priority. It's not right. number one for her. And I respect that. Um, people often want to put you in a box. They want to keep you where you are. You know, like, honestly, BJ is a great example of that. Everybody knows that BJ is a DJ. Now he mm -hmm. is a big a serial entrepreneur. There's growth there. You know, I'm happy to see that growth. So I'm super happy for Rihanna because she's a billionaire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like she's making major moves with Fenty. If Fenty was still on the ground, maybe I feel a little different. But Fenty's awesome. The marketing, yeah. all of what they put into the show and the prep and there are celebrities wearing the fancy clothes, like I'm ready for the game. Again, what game? We're here for the concert. <laughs> That's what everybody says. So, you know, I really, I really thought it all came together very well. Yes, and we are gonna talk more about that nod to Fenty. You saw her pick up the little makeup compact, yes. I'm sure. So stay with us. We'll be right back with DJ BJ and Melody Fresh.
CBS News Detroit, on your block, around the clock, in Macomb County. Hi, we're CBS News Detroit, but we don't just cover the news here. We're also here, here, and everywhere in between. You know, the places you live, work, and play in Southeast Michigan. We're talking less of this, and more of the stories that actually matter to you. CBS News Detroit, on your block, around the clock. That's right, local news just found a home in your neighborhood. We're CBS News Detroit, live, streaming, and on demand. Nice to meet you. CBS News Detroit, on your block, around the clock in Wayne County. Detroit on your block around the clock in Monroe County. CBS News Detroit, the stories you care about. Live, streaming, and on demand. We're on your block around the clock. Southeast Michigan News whenever you want it. We live here. We work here. From North Branch to Southgate. East Point to Westland. Wherever you live, we're here for you. Making a difference in your neighborhood. CBS News Detroit. Live, streaming, and on demand. Building a better newscast, one story at a time. CBS News Detroit, on your block, around the clock in Oakland County. It's here, the new CBS News Detroit. Covering every corner of our community. With experienced journalists, uncovering the stories that truly matter to you. Making a difference in your neighborhood. And weather experts, always looking ahead to prepare you for what's next live streaming and on demand with more hours of local news coming soon southeast michigan news whenever you want it right here on cbs news detroit weekdays at 5 6 and 11 and streaming live Welcome back. Once again, we are joined by DJ BJ and Melody Fresh, and we've been talking about Rihanna's big show at the Super Bowl this year. And we talked about how people were expecting some guests. Perhaps we didn't see any of those. People were expecting some major costume changes. We didn't really see any of that. But Melody, you appreciated the wardrobe of the evening. Yes, I did. I love that she paid homage to fashion, and I loved that she was fully clothed. I don't always want to see thighs and ham hot as a hetero <laughs> woman, you know, but. I just thought that it was pretty dope that, you know, she still put together a look. Yeah. And it didn't require a bunch of skin. And it was striking. I mean, and the still visual sexy, of yes. the red with all of the white with the yes. dancers, it mm -hmm. was visually very appealing. Yes. What did you think about the fashion choices? See, I saw it different. I, I saw it as a, from looking at it, it looked like a bunch, a bunch of marshmallows <laughs> and a, a red gummy bear up top at first, you know, but <laughs> I felt more of it that it was all Rihanna's brand. So for her not to get any money for the show, as they say, but to be able to put your full line, and I can imagine what the sales for Fenty did, you know, right. just not alone yesterday, the build up, but today and as she dropped new items. And we got so many reminders throughout this show that she is not just a, a music, a musician or a singer mm -hmm. anymore. She is a mother. She is an entrepreneur. We saw that not only with the Fenty clothing being worn instead of wearing another designer or another label, but we saw the little Fenty flex, Fenty yeah. makeup. We saw a backup dancer hand her a little compact of powder. She used it and handed it back. And as we've mentioned, she is a billionaire. What did that say to you when she took a moment with this platform, the biggest stage in the world, to remind you, I've got products for sale? Everything. And I know that the sales, I'm sure I, we can Google and find, I know those sales were astronomic. First of all, I tried to get a shirt and it was sold out. So I, you know, that was prior to the show. So, you know, seeing that, seeing that Fancy Flex was perfect. And then it was, it was everything. Again, I was impressed, so. Yeah. For what did, people did that make up for girl. some of the lack of, of, of guests, frills, other, yeah. other things? Did that make up for it? 
On my end, yes, because I'm a big promotional guy, and I know what people was being for a regular commercial during the Super Bowl. They still take bathroom breaks, but this is the halftime show. Nobody's going anywhere. Yeah. So that was almost like a hundred million dollar moment, quick within three seconds. Mm -hmm. Would you be okay with it if maybe her music career doesn't really take off and go in another direction? I mean, clearly she's got things to do. She's got her second child on the way. Mm -hmm. She is a billionaire, not slowing down with her businesses. Do you think this is just a new era for Rihanna, away from the singer era? I do. Um, also, I think that if she does go back to music, she's just doing it. Rihanna's always moved to the beat of her own drum and at her own pace. So I think that, you know, maybe the moment we're waiting for is just not yet. Yeah. She's checking off other things on her to-do list, and I think that's great. Absolutely. I would love to see her in movies, and I would love to see her actually post more on social media so we can see the mommy growth. It's one thing about knowing that it's happening, but yeah. to be able to see it and be a part of it and to see the, like, how Kim Kardashian does or her kids, you can kind of see them growing. One day they're this, the next year you may see another post. I would love to see that from Rihanna. Yeah. yeah. Rihanna so, will clap back, though. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's what she might. Rihanna, if you follow Rihanna two years ago, she would cut into you so quick. <laughs> I don't blame her, though. Okay, <laughs> so she set a new standard, didn't yes. she? We were talking about the kind of the nostalgia and how we've been spoiled in recent years. Last year we had several, you know, nostalgic artists up on mm -hmm. that stage. So what kind of trend do you think she has set going forward for the artists who will, who will pick up this mantle next year and the year after that? Do you think somebody's going to announce something the next show? <laughs> now I'm looking to see, you know, is somebody else, is somebody else using promo? Is somebody else... What are they going to announce? Like, the floor is now open for yeah. that, you know? We haven't had anything like that, so yeah. I think it's pretty dope. I think it takes tough skin for with, with whichever artist comes next, it's going to take tough, tough skin because you have to justify how you want to leave your legacy on that Super Bowl stage. Mm -hmm. From Rihanna, just herself solo, to 50 Cent bringing out Eminem and Snoop Dogg, to a Jay-Z just featuring. So just how do you want to leave your legacy? And like I said, tough skin because social media will, sometimes it'll get to you, but an individual like Rihanna, like I said, she doesn't care if somebody says, I like it, I don't. She's still gonna get her money and she's still gonna be happy.